Hello there, and welcome to the release video for version 20 of the Google Ads API. I'm Mattia Tomazzone. I'm a developer relations engineer on the Google Ads API team, and I will be walking you through the main updates in this release. There are several new features that I want to introduce, but there is a mandatory step that we need to take before we can dive into them. I need to remind you to like this video if you found it useful, but above all, I need to remind you to subscribe to the channel so that you can get all the latest news and updates about the Google Ads API. And that's not the only thing that I'd like to mention before we start looking into what's new in B20. We recently announced an update to the release schedule for the Google Ads API, which changed from having two major releases and one minor release for the rest of 2025 to having three major releases, including B20, the one that just came out. I will leave you a link to the announcement with all the details, including the expected sunset date of each version, in the video description right below. Now let's get started with some new features in the Dimension space. The first one that I want to talk about is reporting for channel controls. Now, if you have been following my release videos or if you have been using the API to manage your demand gen campaigns, you may know that back in V19.1, we released channel controls, which allow you to target specific advertising services such as YouTube in your demand gen ad groups. Now, in V20, you can also get reporting segmented by those advertising services, even if you haven't configured targeting for any of them specifically. Before V20, all the surfaces that you can target in Dimension were being returned as just one ad network type, called Google-owned networks. While starting with V20, if you segment your reports by ad network type, you will get more granular segmentations, split between YouTube Maps, Discover, and Gmail. Note, however, that this segmentation is only effective for data from March 7th onwards. So even if you use V20 and you query for data before that date, you will still get metrics aggregated in the Google-owned networks segment, while you will get the split from that date onwards. This change also only applies to V20. If you use an earlier version of the API, you will see the metrics aggregated in the Google-owned networks segment for all dates. Another cool new feature that we added to the Mangent campaigns in V20 of the Google Ads API is platform comparable conversions. These conversion metrics factor in the impact of view-through conversions to allow you to perform apples-to-apples -apples comparisons with conversions tracked by other advertising platforms. I'll leave a link to a guide with all the details about platform comparable conversions in the description below if you're curious. Dimension, though, is not the only area of the Google Ads API where V20 is bringing new features. We also have some updates in the PMEX space. Starting with V20, you can set campaign-level negative keywords for PMEX campaigns. This gives your advertisers more granularity, as before V20, PMAX only supported negative keywords at the account level or just brand exclusions at the campaign level. Now, if you're familiar with our release videos, you know by now that these were just a few highlights among the many updates and improvements that we introduced in version 20. If you want to see the complete list of changes that were included in this release of the API, just take a look at our release notes. You can find that and other useful links in the video description right below. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. But again, remember to subscribe to the channel so that you can always be up to date with the Google Ads API.